All right, all right, family. I am now here. Thank you for your patience. Definitely appreciate it. About to um bring on my guest. Oh, it's gonna be what's gonna be a ooh, it's gonna be a legendary show tonight. It's gonna be electrifying. Electrifying. Um, let me get to this quick commercial, quick commercial from King Simon, and we'll be right back in about 30 seconds. All right. The legendary Professor James Smalls come to Atlanta, Georgia for two days. April 6th and April 7th, you don't want to miss it. He's doing a public and a private event. Text me right now at 347-496-1022. That's 347-496-1022. The legendary Professor James Smalls, as you've seen him on Hidden Colors and all the rest of the documentaries. Make sure you go to my link tree at linktree forward slash King Simon and Numero Beta. Professor James Smalls in Atlanta, April 6th and April 7th. All right, fam, let me just write this down. Uh, without further ado, I want to welcome back to the show, Aquarius Maximus. Welcome back, Aquarius. Well, thank you. Hey, I want to say congratulations. I know you were on the Breakfast Club this morning, and it's great that you are reaching major, huge platforms in mainstream media. So I'm glad that you're getting your work out there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just tell them, how, how was that? Tell the people how, how was the uh, interview, you know? It was awesome. They jumped straight into cardiology. Like as soon as yeah. I came in there, it was like, so tell me about this Aquarius Maximus. Tell me about cardiology. Tell me about, you know, those mm. questions. So it was dope. You know, Charlemagne and um, Charlemagne is an ace of clubs and um, Jess is a queen of diamonds. So they are very intelligent. Don't sleep on mm. them. Like they're mm -hmm. super intelligent. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. super intelligent and really super conscious. You know, as soon as I came in it, it was like, peace, you know, what's up? So, mm -hmm. you know, people have a lot of conceptions about people. And <clears> I think <throat> that they don't really know the real people. Indeed. Indeed. Well, uh, it's it's um it's, it's a hot topic tonight. A topic everybody. I mean, of course, when I tell you they making this one a big deal, they making this one a big deal. I'm talking about National Guard being deployed, state of emergency, schools are closing, uh, the internet is flooded with TikTok videos, Instagram videos, YouTube videos, and what I'm referring to, for those who may not know, is the April 8th solar eclipse. The people in the New Age or Conscious community, the, the internet community, whatever you want to call it, has been talking about this eclipse for years, saying how important this one is. We remember the one in 2017. I think this one is double the amount of time. I think this one is four minutes and 20 seconds. And the one with the last one was um, two minutes and 30 seconds, so, some, something like that. But this one is more longer than the last one. I know you into astrology, cardiology, you study the sciences, you tapped in, you channel. Got to know from Aquarius Maximus what exactly is going on. Should we be fearful? Should we be happy? Should we celebrate? What's going on with this eclipse, Aquarius? Well, I think it should be a mix of both. Uh -huh. um, you should be happy because this does spell a new beginning for you, mm -hmm. right? Okay. But it's supposed to be a gentle new beginning. It's not supposed to be an impulsive new beginning. Um, you got to be careful with this energy. Like, I know people want things to happen in their life and they'll be able to feel that something great is going to happen. And the reason why you feel that something great is going to happen is because Jupiter is conjunct Uranus right now. It's, it, it'll be conjunct Uranus during that transit. The interesting thing is during the first eclipse, Jupiter was opposing Uranus, right? Mm -hmm. So it was in an opposition. So you got this feeling of expansion and, you know, and that something electrifying was going to happen, but there's a little bit of hesitation. Like, I don't really know what's going to happen. Right. But now we get to the closing of it. And now Jupiter is moving a full moving in conjunction with Uranus. Right. So that's really like signifying that this is major evolution going on. Wow. You know, that was the beginning of evolution. And now this is like almost like the the set off, like the completion of an evolutionary cycle that was taking place. So, Indeed. you know, so that's exciting. You know, Uranus is exciting, especially for us Aquarian age people. However, mm. Saturn is in Pisces. So mm. Saturn in Pisces and Mars is in Pisces for that. Right. Right. 
So Saturn and Mars are going to be conjunct. So Saturn is telling you, hold up, wait a minute, pump your brakes. Don't Mm. get too impulsive. Right? Right. You know, Saturn is saying that. Yeah, Saturn is saying Mm. that. So Saturn and Pisces, Saturn and and, and Mars, you're talking about 12th house energy. You're talking about Saturn being the wiser one, which has been me. And I've been telling people, look, don't go out in the, the eclipse. You know, you're not quite ready for that rush or matter of fact, Saturn deals with the consequences of being impulsive. And they tell you that during these eclipses, the last thing you want to be is impulsive. You know what I mean? So being impulsive is like being a, a combination of stubborn, you know what I mean? And, and just not taking into account what the consequences may be of your actions. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yes, there's going to be good stuff, but it's like this. It's like you got a, a delicious cake in the oven and you want to eat it now. You know what I mean? And then you pull it out too soon. It's not ready. Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. cake falls, you know, and then you, whatever, like just things happen. Um, But Saturn being conjunct Mars says a, says a lot. It's telling you to pump your brakes. You know right. what I mean? Right. So, and I've been telling people to do that, but I've seen a lot of stubbornness and it makes sense because this eclipse takes place on a King of Diamonds day, mm-hmm. which King of Diamonds is, is known as the one-eyed king, right? Because mm-hmm. they see things the way they want to see things and they're stubborn. Right. You know what I mean, so there's a lot of stubborn people insisting on mm-hmm. going out doing this and doing that. And that's great. If you want to do it, and I tell some spiritual people that I know, Mm. look at it like this. Look at the bigger picture. You're a spiritual person. You're like, I'm going to go out. That's fine. You might Mm. be okay. But to advise other people to go out that are Mm. not spiritually yoked, and Mm. some of them might be even half already out of their mind, that's Mm. irresponsible. You know what I mean? Would it cause them to be mentally unstable? Like Yes, yes. And it's going to yeah. be a lot of that. Saturn is in Pisces. Pisces, the 12th house energy deals with mental instability, deals with mental challenges and problems. You know what I mean? We got people yeah. right now that are lashing out at people already. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There are people that are lashing out already at people. There's a lot of rage out there right now on the streets. It's interesting because I'm in New York right now and a lot of the homeless people are yelling at people, like not just yelling. Like I I was outside the other day and this man is standing in front of the hotel just screaming. You know Mm. what I mean? So like you, a lot of times you, there's periods where you see homeless people and they'll just be quiet. You know, they're Mm. not bothering them or they might talk. I've Mm. noticed homeless people screaming just yelling out there. This one lady mm. was yelling at somebody outside. Mm. So you got to watch these things. So there's a little bit of lunacy going on. Remember, the moon rules that. The moon is dealing with that. And during mm. the eclipse, the solar eclipse, the moon is empowered. You know what I mean? Mm. So mm. you're talking about the moon is coming together with the north node, <clears throat> which is called the dragon's head. So, and it is swallowing up the sun. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, Aquarius, I got to ask this real quick. I, you know, I, you, obviously, you know, I interview a whole lot of people, a whole lot of people. So this is primarily a metaphysical channel. So different people for, with different perspectives. A lot of people don't F with the moon no more. They'd be like, yo, the moon is this. The moon. Now, I'm a moon god. I, 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 I do my shit in the moon. I go outside. I meditate. I, I love the energy that's present when the moon is present. But I'm noticing a lot of people don't fuck with the moon. They're like, yo, the moon is um a station of the um, the archons or the draconians and it's this, it's that, it's it's evil. Or like a lot of people in the new age movement don't mess with the moon. What's your thoughts on that? Well, it's said in Essa, it is said um, in some of like Olney Richmond's early writings and stuff. And he's actually the person that really kind of popularized cardiology and in the early 1900s 
that mm-hmm. the earth earth is the planet of greed and the moon is what rules that those emotional drives towards greed so mm-hmm. you have them the moon is definitely connected to the emotional state mm-hmm. um and the emotional state and we're supposed to overcome that emotional those emotional states we're supposed to be able to control those things in order to be able to have personal success and ascension is mm-hmm. to be able to control the impulses you know mm-hmm. what i mean control mm-hmm. the 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 lunacy so to mm-hmm. speak right mm-hmm. so it takes you through different cycles and different peaks mm-hmm. now we're getting ready to have this lunar eclipse which is a full moon mm-hmm. and a full moon is when we're literally at the height like this is the height of mental emotional activity right mm-hmm. where something is literally about to bust Mm-hmm. The new moon, which is the solar eclipse taking place on the 8th, that's a new moon. You know what I mean? So it is about new beginnings. And that's mm-hmm. great. But it's a new moon. It's almost like a new moon with dragon energy, draconian Ooh. energy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? This is draconian right. energy. Anytime you deal with dragon, just think draconian. Mm-hmm. If you don't understand what dragon is, Dragon is not necessarily just literally a dragon flying through the sky. It's rep- it represents draconian nature. Okay? Meaning, meaning. So draconian is strict and can be interpreted as cruel. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like, I got to This is what I got to do. I do what I got to do kind of energy and I keep my emotions out of it. That's what draconian energy is. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So... It's very Saturnian as well because Saturn is described as such. So it's really about discipline and disciplining yourself. So this is not really a quote unquote fun, let me get out and party and look at the sun type energy. During the first part of this eclipse, it took place in Leo. So Mm -hmm. that was the motivation where everybody was taking it as such a spectacle because that's how Leo is. Mm -hmm. So such a spectacle. Everybody was setting up tents and this and that, and we want to go see it because Mm -hmm. of Leo, right? Right now, this particular one is now in Aries. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. it's like we're dealing with a whole different beast here. We have good, we have lots of good energy. Don't get me wrong. There's good energy that's going to give you a new beginning. Some of you, and first of all, this this is not really a new beginning because this is a completion of what started during the first eclipse. So like I was telling Mm. you, I started Guap in 2017. You want to look back to what you began in 2017, right? And likely what you began didn't all the way manifest to its fullest capabilities and that mm-hmm. was that was due to jupiter being oppo- opposing uranus so mm-hmm. the potential is there you know what i mean you got to push through and the lesson was to not give up on whatever it is that you were supposed to be pushing through on because mm-hmm. now you would be getting or you would start to get the rewards now that jupiter is conjunct uranus you'll start to get the full rewards you won't just be seeing the future see that's the problem some mm-hmm. of us we see the future but the current has not matched up to that timeline yet Ooh, so yeah. we give up because oh, wow. it's not that's manifesting just- the way that we want it to manifest because we see it but yeah. it's not there yet you right. know it's not ready but right. now you're getting to a point where the readiness is is cooking like now it's becoming re- ready so mm-hmm. now is the time for planning and strategy and mm-hmm. in enacting that plan and strategy uh what let me ask you do you deal with um the 13th zodiac Do you deal with that at all? Why you don't deal with that? Because I feel that the universe, what it tries to do, and even Uranus, it tries to reduce complexity, not increase it. Mm -hmm. So when things are new, new information is introduced or what we think is new because we go back and digging. Oftentimes we just increase the complexity of, of things that have already been started. But success comes from when you stick to something. I don't care how minute that is. 
So if you decide, I don't care what it is, people think this is right. If you're looking at astrology and you use the whole sign, a whole house, or you use Placidus, or you use whatever, it really doesn't matter. What matters is what you stick with, mm. what you believe. Mm -hmm. Because you are really inputting that energy into it. So if you're going to come and you're going to bring the science of, thir of 13 sign astrology, then guess what? You got to build an entire belief system and then you got to get people rally behind that belief system and you got to stick with it no matter what. So if you mm -hmm. do that, then it could become a constant. But then there's some of us who have our own belief systems that we built that are, that's working for us and we're going to stick to what we're sticking with. Mm -hmm. Uh, this eclipse, how does it impact uh, people we know in this world that are in power? Let's we could say the presidents. I know in England, um, the so-called royal family, they're coming down with diseases and then cancer and all of that. I, I predicted when Meghan Markle came into the house that everything was going to start collapsing now. And pretty soon the only ones royals that would be left was her and her husband. Mm. I predicted that she could one day be queen. Why did you predict that? Because she's a nine of diamonds. Meaning? And she meant that it was going to be the end of the monarchy, monarchy as we know it. That's what that, that card means. Not just because of <clears throat> her culture and where she comes from, which the karma is there as well, but mm. also just purely what she means. She means that this is the end. We're coming into the fulfillment of this old system and the mm -hmm. renewal and coming in of a new system. So absolutely. So I said that everybody was like, well, there's a bunch of people that would need to go before they could come in line. I said, well, watch them all start falling. Wow. Do, do you think the elites are fearful of this eclipse? Is this something they're like, oh shit, it's time. The elites are fearful in general. There's a lot of different fears going on. Um, mm. I know you all are familiar with the great replacement theory. That's probably the biggest fear right now. And that has to do with what I was talking about when I talk about the pole shift, that there's a pole shift, a shift of polarity and a shift of power going on. That's mm. what the great replacement theory is. So you have most of the neoconservatives that have now successfully pretty much set the standard for that being their problem, their issue. So that's why there's right. such a big thing with immigration right now. That's why there's such a big thing because immigration is really just a scapegoat. They don't care about immigration. What they care about is others taking power and they're just diverting the attention to immigration because they can pick on immigrants because they're immigrants. You know what I mean? They can pick on them. They can say whatever they want to say and people won't cry racism. Right. But they really can't pick on, you know, black and brown folks because people are going to cry racism. So mm -hmm. it's all smoke, uh, smoke and um, it's all just like a, a smoke screen mm -hmm. for that. So that is their biggest fear. Their biggest fear right now is that they are being replaced mm -hmm. and that this karmic thing is happening and there's nothing that they can do about it. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people have been talking about this year being the year of the dragon. Yes. Uh, when you hear words like dragon or serpent, does this represent a certain group down here on earth, a race or a culture is particularly it associated? It represents draconian mindset, the draconian mind. So right? just a mind. Okay. Yes. See, you got to understand this isn't, there are some that are going to be stronger <clears throat> draconian mind they have stronger draconian bloodlines right mm -hmm. but because the energy is there at the current time we all have a draconian mindset mm -hmm. we're, we're all in the dragon mindset right now right mm -hmm. so it's not that just like any individual people you can tap into a draconian mindset as well and there's nothing wrong with that it's not about good and evil and all this other stuff that they tried to teach you it's about tapping into the energy so that you can use that energy to get something done or use it for your own empowerment or whatever. This dragon energy is for the obtainment of goals, of solidifying and building, you know, building empires. Empires were built with draconian energy. Indeed. And one in, on your Instagram, you said that uh, solar eclipses represent, uh, I believe, 
the female dragon taking leadership. Yep, they do. Um, he, uh, I mean, is, when is, you add is, that, huh? No, I was about to say, is this anything to do with? No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, this is about the female, and even in a even in an eight year, and believe it or not, it's about the female taking leadership as well. So an eight of hearts has a queen of hearts in Mars, and this is the woman taking power. Um, the Qu Queen Elizabeth took power. I, I said this in my video. Queen Elizabeth took power during an eight year, right? Mm -hmm. So the mm -hmm. eight year is dragon energy in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Then you add the fact that we have this huge eclipse, a solar eclipse happening. Like this is like a quadruple dragon energy that's going Man. on right now. So wow. if you pay attention, the biggest theme right now is women. Like, even if you scroll up and down your Instagram timeline, they're talking yeah. about women everywhere. I know yeah. today they talked about the royal. They talked about, um, what's her name, having cancer. Then they're talking about these women rappers. Then they're talking about um, even what uh, Beyonce, Nicki Minaj. Like, all they're talking about is women in power right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's all. That's the subject everywhere. Mm -hmm. Because this is a shift of power that namely involves women coming into power in some area that they're, they're in. So, of course, people are pointing to, well, then likely there's going to be a woman president, which we already talked about. When was the last time we seen a solar eclipse of this magnitude? Like, when did this happen on Earth? But it wasn't even this big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like this no, big. It, no, it, this it, it's not been this big. So, so no, and we haven't seen it. Solar eclipses <clears throat> are known for, and and solar and lunar eclipse pairs like these are, lo are known for migrations. So what you mean? Migrations. They're known to influence migrations, the oh, migration of people. Yeah. So we had the great migration that took place following the solar eclipse of the early 1900s that brought about the Spanish flu and everything else, right? Mm. So that great migration was people coming from the South and going to the North. I said that this particular solar eclipse cycle was going to feature people going from the North, going back to the South, um, you know, that, that type of thing. So, they they migratory. So if you look back at 2017, a lot of people, you know, we've been taking polls. A lot of people moved. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But a lot of those moves weren't necessarily big enough moves. They were like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm, I'm moving and I know I need to move, but maybe you need to move even further or even more or take a bigger leap. Mm -hmm. So all of these things that have been happening are been, have been happening to influence people to redistribute people amongst the land because we're all caught up in these cities. We're all congregated in cities. You know what I mean? So, and there's no reason to be congregated in these cities because if you go out, you'll see that there's land everywhere. Being congregated yeah. in these cities are, you know, that, that causes sickness on the land. You know, mm. you have to move around. When something doesn't move around in your body, it becomes cancerous, mm -hmm. you know? So when energy doesn't move and is stagnated in your body, then you develop cancer cells and cancer, et cetera. Well, the same thing happens to earth and the same thing happens to the land that you're in. When you're mm -hmm. all congregated into particular areas, it becomes cancerous for the land that we're in. And guess what? The, the land is not going to produce good food for you, then the water is going to be poisonous. All of these things are going to happen until you start redistributing the energy in the country. Indeed. You know, we see what happens during um, a full moon and you talked about it, its effect emotionally on us and in our body. You know, people are very curious in the spiritual community in terms of like our DNA upgrading, anything is there anything associated with that in this eclipse? Anything we should uh, be tapped into at that particular time during the eclipse? I think that during the eclipse itself should be a time where you just totally, we, we oftentimes try to tap in and we try to enforce our will. 
Remember, mm. the sun is about the ego and the will, and the sun is what's being swallowed up. So it's telling you to lay down your will and your ego. Mm. You know what I mean? So this is like, this is not about what you think you want right now. This is about what's best for you right now. So you should be somewhere in just total blankness if you can and just receive, just be ready to receive the next move. You should be That's blank. That's you like should that. be dark. You should go dark. But it, so if the sun represents the will, what does the moon represent? If we're using those words, those verbs, if that's the will, what is the moon? And if so the, moon is the sun is the will and the ego, and the moon is supposed to be representative of the solar, your your soul, your inner intuitive energy, intuitive your energy. receptive, your intuitive stuff. Mm -hmm. So this is at this moon is ruling this mm -hmm. eclipse. The moon is ruling the solar eclipse. So you're supposed to be open and receptive to what's being delivered to you. You know what I mean? Rather than being forceful and in, in, in um, what is the word? Um, that was a word I was using, impulsive. Impulsive, right. impulsive. Those are the things that you should lay down. You right. know what I mean? Don't, don't be impulsive. <clears throat> don't try to force things. Don't try to do anything. Just mm. be still. Mm. Be still. You know? Wow. You know, different cultures, as we study history, we see different cultures did different things. Some cultures were into uh, multiple gods, polytheism. Some cultures um, were into monotheism, one god. We know a lot of cultures give reverence to the sun and worship. They say worship the sun. Was there ever a time, from what you know, what you tapped into intuitively or what you read, where the culture worshipped the moon more than the sun, than the sun more than the moon? Everything had a time in its place. There was mm -hmm. no, th there should be no strict uh, worship of anything. And it's not even just worship. It's more like utilize. Like utilize, you know yeah, I mean? let's say that, yeah. So it's more like utilize. And what you want to do is be in balance with your utilization, you know? Mm -hmm. Because again, too much moon energy is lunacy. Right. And then too much sun energy is ego and too right. much will. So you mm -hmm. want to be able to integrate those two. I mean, that's what the, the struggle is. How do I integrate those two in my life? Mm -hmm. One is a time when I'm supposed to use my intuition to be led. And then one is a time when I'm supposed to use my willpower. That's right. why tools like cardiology and astrology are so important. Even numerology. Mm -hmm. Because obviously a year like an eight year being a dragon year is a time for willpower. This is mm -hmm. a time when you're supposed to be able to flex your will and mm -hmm. to be able to achieve things, mm -hmm. but all within discipline. There's still mm -hmm. times when there needs to be a lights out. You can't overdo it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and that's what the danger is with people this year with dragon energy. The danger is mm -hmm. overdoing it and mm -hmm. then bringing illness. Mm -hmm. you know and stuff like that like i'll say this saturn is going to be conjunct mars and pisces during the eclipse pisces rules vision you know so why would you be staring at the sky during a time when they say you're most vulnerable your vision is most vulnerable when mm -hmm. saturn and mars the two quote unquote malefics are in the sign of vision mm -hmm. you know what i mean so, and this is an, another thing as well, is that Saturn in Pisces and, and Mars in Pisces, anything in Pisces is slow. So you may not feel the effects right away. Right. right? Some ill effects may come later on. You know mm. what I mean? So they may not, it's not like that day something is going to happen because mm -hmm. the effects could take time to manifest. That's what Saturn mm -hmm. is. Saturn is how is your karma going to manifest, right? Mm -hmm. And Saturn in a Neptune watery sign means that it's going to manifest subtly. It's going to manifest in a slow way. It's going to wear down something, you know? Mm -hmm. So there could be the wearing down, the wearing down of your vision, the wearing down of your bones, your teeth, and all of these other things that I've been talking about. 
mm-hmm. you know. So that's why it's so it's so good to know at least the astrology of things and to pay attention, because mm-hmm. Mars will always point to what you likely need to do. Even mm-hmm. your Mars card, your Mars card is telling you, it's giving you instructions on where you need to point your energy towards. Right, you know what right, I mean? Right. So Mars is in Pisces. Pisces is going within. <clears throat> that means that you need to point your energy within. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Not mm-hmm. outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Indeed. What What do you think uh, moving forward, do you think like, in my opinion, like this year has been probably the fastest year I've experienced since I've been on this realm. Like this year had just flew by. I mean, March came like that. Yeah. Do you think this eclipse is going to speed up time even more? Is it going to affect time? Will it slow it down? It, it is going to seem like a speeding up time because Mercury is also retrograding. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there's going to be a sense of a loss of time. You know, yeah, and that's really yeah. what it is. It's not necessarily speeding. You're having a sensation of losing time. Damn. You know, like where did time go? Yeah. You know? yeah. So, you know, what what did I how did I lose time? I've been experiencing this all week. Mm-hmm. Like I've had to plan extra ahead of time, like hours ahead of time, just to not be late for something, mm. you know, because there's a, there's this loss of time. And that mm. also probably has to do with Saturn and Pisces too, because Saturn is the timekeeper. And in Pisces in water in the deep ocean, there is no time. Mm. So, so you're talking about the timekeeper in a in a wormhole, you know what I mean? Right. In, in the in the darkness. So we're already dealing with the loss of time. Now we got we got Mars there. We got Mercury retrograde. There's a lot of planetary energy going on, but all of it is telling you to slow the hell down for a second, mm. just for a second. Mm-hmm. You know, there's gonna mm-hmm. come a time where you can enact your strategies this year, but there, it has to be balanced with the times that you got to slow down and chill out. Speaking of deep waters, um, we know the moon, we talked earlier about the moon affecting the water. What about pregnant women who have a baby in the deep waters of their womb? How is this solar eclipse going to affect these babies that are in the deep waters of these women's womb during this time? Well, these are very special children born in this time anyway. Mm -hmm. There are so many different astrological configurations pointing to the fact that these new children are going to be very special, you know? Yeah. And what I mean by special, special in, in terms of what their purpose is and their higher minds, et cetera, but they're likely going to come out with some sort of issues that we're going to perceive as issues, but are really a part of the evolution of where we're going as humanity. Mm-hmm. So these children are, are already, even during the pandemic, you know, if you look at some of the astrology of just the generations, like the generational astrology, you can find even in cardiology where a whole group of people are going to be, their schooling is going to be disrupted. And you right. can see that in their cards. So you can see that in their astrology. So mm-hmm. what we had during this pandemic is whole groups of people whose outer development was disrupted, mm-hmm. you know? For mm-hmm. a reason. These things happen for a reason. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have the same thing with children. You know, this is a dragging year. So people in certain cultures desire to have children during a dragging year, mm-hmm. um, during the uh, um, eight year, because they're considered to be monarchs. They're considered to be, you know, again, they're the ones that are building a new, a mm-hmm. new kingdom, mm-hmm. so to speak. You know, mm. so they so they desire to have children around these times. So these children mm. are building new kingdoms. These are these are those children that are coming now. However, they're also going to be very different than what we're used to seeing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So should a pregnant woman stay home? Should they go out? Or will you tell Absolutely. them to stay your ass home? Absolutely should stay yeah. home. Indeed. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, like I said, mine is like everybody should stay home. But if yeah. anything, child, pregnant women should stay home. And now they're starting to say that, you know, they're starting to talk about closing the schools and stuff like that. And again, 
I think it's more because of the various threats that are going on that we don't know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And how people are using different types of methods now that they're set, they've been sending spy things in the, you know, in the, the sky and they've been hacking everything. Like there's so much things that are going yeah, on that yeah. people are not aware of, you know? So they're going to tell you, they're going to put their best bet forward and say, hey, maybe we should close the schools. Maybe we should do this. And they're not going to tell you why. Yeah, right. Yeah, but yeah. There, it's not always an evil thing that they close the school. It could be a sign to say that maybe you need to stay home. Mm. Some things are not so complicated. They're not so, you know, extraordinary. You know, if they're they're sensing a danger and a threat, maybe you should sense a danger and a threat too, and just stay home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you know, some people describe uh, the solar eclipse when the sun gets engulfed by the moon as the sun and the moon having sex. They use that as a description. The sun and the moon uh, has like cosmic sex, sex going on. Now, now, as we know in this realm, sometimes when a brother get with a sister. He ain't the same no more because of that sexual energy hit his ass. It could be good or bad. So is our son going to behave differently after this moon get his get a hold of his ass? I'm more, I mentioned I'm more of look of it as a battle. A battle. Because wow. what is happening esoterically, what is reflecting is that men are being moved out the way so that women could come forth. So, mm -hmm. you know, years ago, women didn't really <clears> have the <throat> ambition that they have now to come for it. The mm. difference is the ambition that women have now. Mm -hmm. So now that women are more ambitious, mm -hmm. this is you're now seeing this really play out. But mm -hmm. decades ago, women didn't want to do this. They didn't want to do that. They weren't as am am ambitious. So these eclipses mm -hmm. didn't seem that powerful then. But now that women are more ambitious, you're going to see the power of how women act with these eclipses, how women can use these energies to, to manifest and to push themselves up higher and higher positions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about politics? How do you, do you is this going to affect, oh, affect absolutely. The, the presidential so election? Affect leaders, CEOs, um, presidents, heads of state, all of those. Mm -hmm. So everybody is in the gun, under the mm -hmm. gun, who is in some sort of leadership position, especially men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're going to see the manifestation of this within the next three to six months. You know, there's going to be some leaders, some major powerful leaders that are taken out. You know, you just went to the breakfast club and, um, you know, you was kicking it with Charlemagne. I heard Charlemagne say something the other day um, talking about the whole Biden the presidential election. And he was like, he feel as though the Biden administration held Kamala back. And um, you were talking about moving women coming forward. Um, yeah, Kamala was quiet like a ma. I ain't hear, I ain't hear shit from Kamala in four years. So, I mean, do you think that they're, they know this is happening? So they purposely wanted to uh, like, kind of quiet her because they I, know honest, the I, I honestly feel and i've said this before like i kind of feel like they know that it's going to happen and they know that the only way that a woman would be able to become president is if she came through through the vice presidency i feel mm -hmm. like that's obvious because that's the reason why hillary clinton didn't win you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. such a huge opposition to that happening and such a huge opposition. I mean, the opposition is huge. Mm -hmm. And if you don't believe me, be a woman just even in the corporate area. Be a woman doing what I'm doing. It's been difficult mm -hmm. for me. You know what I mean? I've dealt with walls of men that didn't necessarily say they didn't want me to do certain things, but they made it impossible for me to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this is something that happens. I mean, I didn't think it happened. I was naive myself. Mm -hmm. But starting a cryptocurrency, I thought that that was going to be something that everybody was going to be down with. Everybody was going to understand. 
But the biggest opposition I got, because in Guap Coin, we're like 60 to 65 percent women. Mm. So, you know what I mean? And so in Guap Coin, I had gotten a lot of pushback or just a wall of silence from men. Mm. So that's the magnify that in the presidency, a woman trying to become president, mm -hmm. you know? So I think that they knew that the only way that a woman was going to become president was to be through the vice presidency, which is why they ushered her along with somebody who is in a very weak position. Biden is in a very weak position physically with the people, everything, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. And they know that he's not going to last much longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, something else I hear about this clip is that um, portals are being opened. Do, from your knowledge, do you, do you know if any entities will be entering this realm or exiting? Any, any, any stuff like that going on with this eclipse? Well, what happens is those entities get activated in you. You know oh, what I mean? Wow. So that's the portal. The portal is in your mind. Right, so your right. mind gets activated and channels these different resident energies that are living within you. You know what yeah. I mean? So that's why I said there was going to be a lot of lunacy and derangement and et cetera. You know, yeah. a lot of that. We have to stop thinking about, um, I want to, I just noticed that someone said that Kamala is going to be horrible. She's going to create war. If you don't understand, we've been in war for a very long time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? This is war times. Mm -hmm. We're in war times. We're in Mars times right now. <clears throat> there is no creation of war. War is already here. Mm. You know what I mean? So what you want is a dragon leader during a war time. You want somebody who can be militaristic. If I was gonna, if there were gonna be a woman in power, I would damn sure want a woman in power who can be militaristic mm -hmm. during this time. Because this is a going to be a hell of a time. This is a hell of a battle, different battles that are going on on all levels. Mm -hmm. So she's not going to start anything that hasn't already been started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed. I'm, I'm going to start taking, Um, I know I see the chats Um, get busy tonight. I'm going to start taking questions soon. Uh, We got about 20 minutes left. So y'all can put some questions in the chat. Um. One question I want to ask when somebody asked this early, I know a lot of people who have jobs are concerned with this Aquarius and this person says, what if you have business on April 8th is there and there's no way to change it? What would you advise people who are maybe Pluto, afraid to go to Pluto work? And Aquarius, Aquarius means freedom from those things. And yeah. Pluto means it will force you to have freedom from those things. So if you have a job that you cannot take off, then that's not a good thing during these times. Mm -hmm. If you can't take off one day because your spirit, your soul takes precedence above all, all things, even jobs. Indeed. So if you have a job that you can't take off a day, then you don't have a job. You have imprisonment. Shit. Oh, man. Uh, let's get to the, the, the questions are rolling in. Let's get to uh, some more questions. Once again, family, put some questions in. We got about 20 minutes left. I'm going to start taking questions from the family so we can all get our questions answered about what exactly is going on. So much talk. I want to thank everybody. We got about 3,000 people in the chat. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Let's get to some questions. The next question is, uh, should we meditate during the eclipse? If you... Meditation, if you can practice releasing like going blank some people can do that you yeah. know what i mean and they can do that in meditation where they just like totally empty out their mind and just be in a state of receptivity if you can do that then fine you know meditate or whatever but what i'm hearing is spirit is just like saying just practice doing nothing <laughs> you know what i mean nothing like, you know, when your mama get mad at you when you're a little kid and say, sit still, you know what I mean? You're like, but mom, can yeah. I do it? No. Mom, can I do it? No. Because you're still exercising your will and you're still pulling for straws trying to figure out what to do. Just mm. do nothing. You know what I mean? 
Right. Do nothing. Do nothing could be do what's necessary. Go to the bathroom, make some food for your kids, whatever. But do nothing. Don't try to impor, impose your will on anything. You know what I mean? That's Indeed. probably the best thing that you can do. Sometimes you don't have to get all ultra spiritual. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I know a lot of higher beings, higher galactic beings, higher spiritual beings that are not like what you think they are. What they like? What they like, Aquarius? They, I pray, <laughs> meditate, eat flowers and all that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they're, they see, there's some of them, they're not like that. You know, we've been pushed into all these little dogma spaces like we got to do this or we got to do that or this is evil. And it's not you got to understand that's still religion. We moving out of Pisces out. We're moving away from that shit. Right. right, right. We're moving into the age of reality. Mm. You know what I mean? Because in reality, you come with your spiritual thing and you meet something that you think is spiritual and that thing turn around and eat you up. Mm. You know, that's the reality of it. Mm. So the reality of it, it, even with me, if I'm sp facing spiritual beings and all this other stuff, I'm not just going to take your fuck, excuse my language word for what you say you are and what you can right. do for me. Right. I'm not going to do that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Where's the evidence? <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm supposed to just take your word that this is what's going on or whatever. No, that's why you have Saturn take time and evidence over time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Get to know people, get to know spirits too, mm -hmm. to test them. Mm -hmm. Don't give them power and dominion over you. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Let's get to this next question, Aquarius. Um, April 8th is the day of my birth. I'm calling it the solar birthday. Is there any additional meaning for me seeing that the eclipse is on my birthday? Absolutely. You know, the meaning of it is you are guided 100%. So you really need to be listening to this. Ooh. You are guided. Mm. You know what I mean? Like you are, mm. you, th you can sit there and throw yourself in the mercy of the universe right now. You are being guided. Mm -hmm. This is a path where you don't have control like that. Like you want to move. And it's not that you don't have control, but you want to move with the energy. You want to go with the flow of where you're being taken. You don't want to try to go against it. You want to go with it. Imagine it as a wave that's coming through your life. And if you try to go against the wave, it's going to be difficult. You might drown. You say, look, I'm going to ride this wave out and see where it takes me. Mm. Uh, somebody's asking about doing shrooms. What do you think about in, in, in engaging in shrooms or any entheogens during the eclipse? I would not do anything while Saturn is in Pisces conjunct Mars. You know what I mean? Like, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't do that. Um, I love Saturn. But a lot of y'all don't really work with Saturn energy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So a lot of y'all are Uranian, Uranian. I'm going to do what I want to do and do how I want to do it. And Saturn is like, okay, you know, like grandmother said, okay, then go ahead and test me. You know what I mean? So I don't know a lot about mushrooms because I don't do mushrooms. You ever but do nope. And I ever. don't really intend on. Why not? Well... First and foremost, I have a heavy, heavy, heavy Piscean signature on my chart. Mm -hmm. So I'm already, you know, kind of in, I'm as, I'm at, let me put it like this. I'm high <laughs> all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I don't need yeah. to get any high. I don't even have the desire to get any higher than I already am. Mm. My desire is to be grounded. Right. I would love to be grounded. I want to stay grounded. I want to stay with my feet planted firmly on the ground because I have the tendency to float away all on my own. Mm. So I'm not I'm not really into those things. But um I don't even smoke weed, you know. So occasionally I've tried um 
what do you call it, edibles and all that other stuff. And it, it, to me, it just became pointless because I'm like, I'm I'm in a good place in my own body where I am. Right, right, right. Yeah, I can't mess with edibles, man. Can't yeah, I try, I tried it once just to have the experience and it just wasn't an experience that was very pleasing to me. <laughs> me neither. It was not so, pleasing at all. Yeah, it had me. Ooh, I, I was gone for like 12 hours, damn near. I was gone oh, for a week. <laughs> a week. God damn, a week. Yeah, I was gone for a week and it kept coming back. Kept hitting yeah. me, coming back. Because I mean, like I said, I had Pisces on the ascendant. Neptune is about to conjunct damn. myself. For, Neptune is going to be going through my first house for a very long time. Yeah. So trust me, I'm as high as you possibly, I could be all on my own. Mm, mm, mm. Well, you're the medibles, man. Be careful, family, if, if you're engaging with that. Be very, very, very careful out there. All right. Um, Thank you for the super chat. Um, damn, how do I, what's going on? Okay. Zipporah, and um, thank- another thing, real quick. Yeah. They were asking, should I? One of the messages that I've been getting lately, and especially because this is an eight year and this is a dragon year, you got to mm-hmm. stop looking for permission. Ooh, like on a yes. lot of things. A yes. lot of us are walking around <clears throat> constantly looking for permission constantly. to do certain things. Yeah. And that is not a good thing in the dragon world. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to be decisive in your decisions because the permission thing is is for us is rooted in slavery is rooted in you know all of that type of mentality so you got to start working with that that need for permission on on certain things yeah no that's that's a big one i noticed that a lot with the people in the chat when speakers come on here they're like, what should we do so they, they it's like they looking for permission to do a lot of certain things and if the speakers say no they ain't doing shit they, yeah. they ain't gonna go against the grain like me. I'll go, I'll say, fuck that. If I have a feeling, I'm doing it. You yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. Let's get to this uh next super chat question. Shout out to Zippero for the super chat donation. What do Some, we need to uh, yeah, uh, oh, I'm sorry? Somebody just mentioned about the doom and gloom. Mm-hmm. You know, I said that this was gonna be a new beginning, beautiful new beginning, right? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. This is going to be a new beginning that's going to take its time. It's going to be slow. You 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 want it to take its time. You don't want it to hit you like a truck. Mm. You know, you don't want new beginnings to hit you like that. It could be quite traumatizing. I remember one time, um, I think it was the I Ching. There's an I Ching phrase, but it points to almost like the tower in the um, tarot. Mm. You know, how sometimes a good thing could seem like a good thing, but hit you so damn hard that it becomes a horrible thing. Like Mm. even going viral, you know what I mean? Sometimes going viral can seem like being a good thing, but then you get hit by so much, you can't handle at once that you break down. Right. Right, yeah, yeah, I think whoever wrote that, obviously they didn't listen to the whole show, or if they did, they wasn't paying attention. They just want to write that. There's been no doom and gloom. Um, It's been a very, you know, inspiring show. So, yeah. Um, let's get to this question. What do we need to do to get right and make sure we're on the right side? The judgment energy been on me heavy, they're saying. This is Zipporah. He's been, he's well, been experiencing that. Well, well, I'll tell you this. If you've been feeling heavy judgment energy, likely, number one, that's coming from you internally. Mm-hmm. But if you've been feeling heavy judgment energy, then get out there and do some good. You know what I mean? Like, do good. Like, that does work. You can clear your karma. You know what I mean? So if you've been feeling the only judgment energy that's even valid is based on karma. So that means that you did something that you would like to reverse. You mm-hmm. have the right to reverse things that you did or reverse that energy. You have that right. You have the right to regret. You have the right to repent. You have the right to do over or attempt to reconcile the energy that you put out there. So there's plenty of things that you can get out there to do, to do good, to build up that. Because remember, the do good is for you. It's not for other people. 
when you get out there and you're doing good, you're doing good things. So whether you're volunteering at a homeless shelter or you're giving or you're feeding people that need to be fed, or you're going to take care of children, you're donating to children causes. These are all good for you. You know what I mean? So what it's going to do is it's going to release that heaviness of guilt, slowly guilt or this or that or judgment, and it's going to replace it with good feelings. So you can mm. go out there and do some good things. There's never, it's never too late. A lot mm. of us think that we mess up, we do things, then it's just too late. That's it. That's it for us. And then you just continue down the cycle of self-destruction when it's all you can always reverse that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's get to the next question um i feel called to go to the cahokia mounds during the eclipse is it your suggestion to stay home and not be out permission again for me i'm not going out for my suggestion for people stay home if you feel called go ahead you'll have to deal with whatever good bad and the ugly i'm only saying that going out accelerates this energy it leaves you open very 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 open and some people are not ready for that level of, of openness they're just not mm -hmm. they're not prepared for it you know what i mean so think back to 2017. how was 2017 for you if 2017 was great for you and you can handle it, by all means, do you. You know what I mean? But I know a lot of people that experience a lot of the brunt of change in such a fearful, such a hard, heavy way that they're like, uh, I'm okay. I'm cool. I'm not doing that again. Indeed. Yeah. All right, let's get to the next question. Uh, oh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, uh, is the eclipse related to the Pluto retrograde? No, I mean, that's that these are things that happen during the same time as the eclipse and could be looked at as different aspects of you know what's happening i mean pluto goes these planets go retrograde frequently you know what i mean they have a retrograde cycle the retrograde cycle is about the intensity or dealing with the intensity going within it's also about the karmic results of what happened when it was forward you know so when it goes retrograde you get to go back into times where things you may have been excessive or whatever and rectify that karma. Even with Pluto's retrograde, Pluto deals with empowerment and themes of empowerment. So when Pluto was direct, where you do, did you overreach your power? Did you overextend yourself? Do you want to go back and rectify that? Then you get an opportunity to do it. That was just what we were talking about before. You right. get, you get, you get opportunities to rectify the things that you did. Mm -hmm. So that's it. It's never, things are never, it's never too late to rectify your karma or to begin to rectify your karma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, all right. Let's get to the next question. Six of Diamonds is reparations. How does that connect with 2024? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're already, we've been in a cycle of reparations already, even all throughout the pandemic, mm -hmm. right? So again, what happens during the reparation cycle is that people's plans cannot go forward until they reach back and pay these debts, regardless. And they know this. We're the only ones that don't consider the cycles of giving and taking in karmic cycles. We don't consider that. The Jews consider it because they have what during Rosh Hashanah and all of uh, those times, a time when they have to pay their debts, they have to reconcile their debts, or they know that they can, won't be able to move forward and their businesses will not do good if they don't do this. Everybody knows they have to pay the piper. Everybody. But the, the thing is, the piper has to stand up and give them the bill. You know what I mean? So if you don't give them the bill, then they're going to still give you something, but it's not going to be nowhere near what you could be getting. 
So now we're waking up and we're requiring that. It's never been a better time to require reparations. We're in the middle of a huge heated election. You know what I mean? So Mm. literally people should be making that their number one point. But you can't just make it your number one point. You also have to create a plan for it. You also have to give them the structure. You got to do the Saturn work. You mm. can't just say you want reparations when you don't even know what the hell reparations looks like. You don't know what the bill is and all of that. You got to make all of that real. And you said you got to do the Saturn work. I hear that. <laughs> all right. All right yeah, next people question. Just think, people just think that you're supposed to get. You know yeah. what I mean? But the problem is when you think you're supposed to just get, you don't really believe. There's no belief system. Thus, nothing is going to manifest for you. What helps to the belief system is that when you write it down on paper, when you put it into law, when you ask what the requirement is, this helps and assists with the belief system so that it could really happen for you. Right, right. Okay, how next question, how will the eclipse affect the Bitcoin how halvin? I think I think that's how you pronounce it. April 7th, Halvin on April 17th. I think that Bitcoin is already being affected by this eclipse, right? Um, or by the eclipse. This is this has already happened. The having in in what's going on right now is this huge greed scarcity thing that's going on. And the eclipse is taking place on the King of Diamonds Day, which is one of the greediest cards there is, which is mm. why the businesses are going to suffer which is why money is going to suffer and which is why big institutions are gonna suffer too. And right now they got their hands knee deep in Bitcoin. Bitcoin is very institutional now, you know what I mean? So what is likely going to happen is there is going to be an explosion in the altcoin sector. So this is alternative Mm. currencies are going to be the ones that are going to be the big winners in this energy. And you can tell because Jupiter conjunct Uranus, you know, so Jupiter conjunct Uranus and in um, this May um, new moon in Taurus that's coming up is largely pointing to these alternative coins, these alternative projects that are likely going to be the ones that do well during this season. All right. Let's get to this next question. Is it true that a comet is aligned with the eclipse? And what would that mean on the celestial calendar? I heard that too. I seen it on TikTok. It said a comet is is aligned. And it's it's another dragon. It's another dragon symbol. There are lots of dragon symbols in this eclipse. There's lots of dragon symbols in this year, right? And I already told you what that means. That means that if you are going to be successful in your plans and the things that you want to do, then you have to adopt a more draconian mindset in order to do it, which is discipline, which is gaining control of your emotions, biding your time, strategizing, planning, et cetera. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So th- this is this is this is what this means. It's underscoring that. It's telling you this ain't no game here. Hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of people think this is a game, think this is cute. They're like, oh, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. And that's fine. But the real winners are gonna be the ones who are able to contain themselves and channel and funnel their energy towards individual goals that affect the greater collective. Mm, indeed that was uh you gave some great advice uh to start the new year i remember you was telling the people on the show and myself to uh about the discipline self-discipline being having self-discipline this year and structure so yeah definitely definitely uh let's get to we're gonna do about two more questions then we're gonna get out of here family uh let's get to this next one what if we have tried writing things down doing cleanses uncrossings etc and it still seems difficult to manifest how do we overcome this? First of all, by enduring that, which is, what do they say? Um, I, I figured there's a statement that talks about that. When you talk about what something is so difficult, uh, too much, it's, it's almost like too much is given, much is required type thing. 
-hmm. So if you have some very, very serious goals, first of all, you can accomplish anything, but everything comes along with time. Your problem is you're impatient. Like that's evident. You's like, you've tried. Well, keep trying, keep doing. Everything comes in this due time. But the reason that what would help you is, is if you're studying your astrology or you're studying cardiology, because then you're able to see when the right time may be and that this is just not the right time. It's not that it's not going to happen. It's just that this ain't the right time. Keep on pushing. Mm -hmm. The people, the difference between you and other people who actually manifest is that they don't give up. Mm. Yeah, that's facts. That is facts. All right, let's. Um, Terrence wants to know what's the eclipse connection with melanin? What is the eclipse connection with melanin? I believe personally that melanin enables a more, a more deeper, connected, rooted energy yeah. that is very, very good in building personal belief systems. That's building belief systems in general. Our problem is our belief systems, the belief systems that we build tend to be very, very, very limiting and very, and, and at times even negative. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that we can't build a belief system that would be incredible and create a whole incredible culture around it that would connect us, we'd be interconnected. It's just that the belief systems that we build um, are largely based off of lack and victimhood and all of these things that have been bred into us up until now that we're now in the process of flushing out of our, our epigenetic hit, you know, condition that we're in right now. So we're in the process of cleaning ourselves of the things that are that our 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 bodies are holding in cellular memory. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and what the eclipse is the, does is it's more of an eliminator <clears throat> than it is a activator. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Interesting. So so it's not like these things are activating us, it's cleansing us. It's removing mm -hmm. things. Indeed. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I want to get to the, a couple of super chats before I get out of here. I might not get to all of y'all, but let me just get to a couple of these. I've seen that I had some coming in. Um, Song Brown wants to know, I'm a seven. I, is that a spades? Any suggestions? Seven of, clubs. For, seven of clubs. Any suggestions for me in these times? As a seven of clubs, you are supposed to be a beacon, an example you know, in your words, in your deeds, et cetera. You're supposed to be seen because when you're seen, you allow your voice, you allow other people's voices who are not necessarily heard to be heard. That's what Brother Rich does here. He's a seven of clubs. So you should be watching what he does, you know, because mm. he's doing what he should do. He's amplifying voices. He is a voice. He has a powerful voice of himself because he's a seven of clubs and he's using his powerful voice to amplify the voices of others. So you're talking about someone who can create communication platforms, who can create groups, who can strengthen others with their words. You know, that's what you should be doing. You should be connecting. You should be bringing people together. Indeed. Yo, Aquarius, yo, I was so busy during the, um, the what was that, the, um, the event, the, uh, yeah, how was it for you? How did it go for you at the um, album? Oh, it was, party? it was wonderful. It was really, yeah. really wonderful. It was really put well put together. It reminded me of the events that we used to have kind of back in the days where everybody would kind of come out and there wouldn't yeah. be any problems. There would be yeah. people of all ages. And yeah. something for everybody kind of thing. It really kind of took me back because, yeah, yeah. you know, participating in the events as of the last recent years, the last recent decade, mm -hmm. um, you don't have that type of community penetration. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. thought it was impressive that you mm -hmm. were able to bring people together across all age groups, all different culture 
cultural backgrounds, what even mm -hmm. what whoever different types and bring them under the same roof yeah. and and have and it be problem less problematic than anything. So that was very impressive. I was I was very impressed. You know, there was some sisters there that there that was like 77. Like they was like yes. I had them from, like it was that, dope, yo. They, yes, were, they, was, they, was shooting pool, they were shooting pool in the back and it all was. that. I'm like, wow. That to oh, me man. was very impressive. They're yeah, very impressive. Yeah. Shout out to everybody who came out um the album listening uh party that we did. Uh I'm gonna give y'all info on the next one I will be doing. Club 63. Club uh, you know what I'm calling it Aquarius? Club 363. It's Club okay. 363. Yeah, okay. Club 363. I'm 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 bringing that club element back. I'm bringing it back. I, I got I got a lot of ideas but it's called Club 363. So I'm gonna, I'm keep everybody, you know, notified about what's going on. I need you for the next one as well. God, you got to come awesome. here. I definitely be there. <laughs> Definitely. Indeed. Indeed. All right. Let's um let's get to this next one. Uh any advice on a queen of diamond born in the year of the dragon, April 9th, 1989, on the best way to take advantage of the solar eclipse? Well, like I said, the queens is largely about the the queen of diamonds is the balance between right. her masculine and her feminine side, right? So her masculine side is building her business and building out structures with money and investments. But our feminine side is about being receptive to spiritual energy and taking care of herself, like self-care to the max. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So knowing, I think the power of the queen of diamonds and dragon is, like I said earlier, knowing when to shut it down and knowing when to turn it on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So this is not going to be a year where you just shut down. This is not going to be a year where you just turn on. This is going to be a year where you set aside time to shut down. And then there's going to be set aside time to, to achieve goals. And you got to be satisfied when both times come. When it comes to time to shut something down and just focus on yourself and withdraw, give yourself peace and stuff like that, then be good with that. Take care of yourself. And then mm. live to live to to fight another battle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So being really, really good to yourself and prioritizing yourself, and then also prioritizing your goals, that is the secret for you this year. Dope, dope. All right. Um last question. Somebody asked about, I don't see it now. Somebody was asking about um uh guap coin. What's the how can somebody get a hold of Guap? Could you tell us? Um, okay, yeah, here we go. How can we so, get her coin? Yeah, Nina, so shout out Nina. Our coin. So, number one, we're on an exchange, it's called Probit, probit.com. If you go to Guap, you'll see some links that go to Probit, but you can go to Probit, P R O B I T.com, and look up Guap, and you can get it there. You can go to Coinbase and if you look up Guap, it'll come up, but we're not trading on Guap yet. I'm on Coinbase yet. But what you need to do is add Guap to your wait list. You need to hound them because we have an application in with them. But if they don't see it move with y'all and the interest with y'all, they're not going to move our application through. So mm -hmm. go there and at least add us to the wait list, or your watch list and you know request us there and then they'll start to pay attention but you can still get guap coin on probit indeed indeed all right all right what a show i want to thank you once again aquarius for coming on the show and dropping this wisdom uh once again congratulations on you know just expanding and getting the message out there being on the breakfast club uh tell the people anything you got coming up all your contact information so everybody could get in contact with you well, next week I decided that I was going to do some eclipse readings. So dope. I have that link on Snapfeed. So if you want your own personal eclipse reading to find out that. how this eclipse is going to affect you, then you would get an eclipse reading. So you can get mm. that by going to my Snapfeed. It's snipfeed.co forward slash Aquarius Maximus. Or you can go to AquariusMaximus.com and click on shop in the mm -hmm. menu and it'll take you there as well and you can book an eclipse reading so at the end of the day it's all about you and it always starts if you have personal questions to get your own personal reading to find out how it's going to affect you and if you're a dragon that's how you move mm -hmm. the dragon energy 
you consult for your strategy, your own personal strategy with dragon energy. So, mm. you know, so I do have those available. Take advantage of it now because I don't know how long that I'm going to be able to have those available. Indeed. Uh, any any other contact? I know you got the I, um, um, my cheat. Yeah, you my thing. I also have a retreat coming up in May. Um, from May 8th to 15th, we're having a retreat in um, Tulum, Mexico. So you mm. can get you can get there by um, going to my retreat page on my website or just contacting me and I'll send you the link. I am going to be having a dragon certification, cardiology certification that we're going to be Ooh. teaching there. And that is specifically how to use cardiology to obtain your goals and to use that that draconian mindset in order to push yourself to the next level, because that's really what this energy here is about, or this year is about. So mm. we'll be having that as well. So you don't have to attend physically in Tulum. You'll yeah. be able to attend that remotely as well. So, um, and I'm gonna make sure I get with you about um, putting that up here. Cause you know, I wanted to share that continually mm. and get mm. people to sign up for that certification. Dope, dope. Once again, family, want to thank you for tuning in tonight. I uh, want to thank Aquarius Maximus for coming on tonight. Everybody, y'all enjoy your night. Make sure y'all go to her website. Check out all the stuff she got going on. A very, very business-minded sister. So I want to, uh, y'all need to, y'all need to get put on game with the game that she's giving out. So make sure y'all check out, um, you know, and do what y'all got to do. With that being said, this is Brother Rich signing out. Thank you, Aquarius. Thank you, family. See you Bye. next time. Peace. Peace.